in the ghetto at different um, different free health clinics available to identify and to trap you black fighters and Native Americans. All this is for is to trap the nation of Israel. That's it. All these other people, all these other nations are just going to get caught in a crossfire. That's all this has been about is the nation of Israel. It says, most recently in two, July 2012, security researcher Javier Galbali demonstrated that iris scans can be spoofed, allowing a hacker to use synthetic images on an iris to trick an iris scanning device into thinking it had received a positive match for the real iris over 50% of the time. So, you know, you can trick iris scans, okay, like I said earlier. You can take a picture of a retina or somebody's eye and hold it up to the iris scan and, you know, and then it'll give you access. But with the, with the iris recognition, it takes, like I said, it takes x-rays behind your eyes and recognizes your veins. So, mm -hmm. ain't no trick in the system. Ain't no trick you in the system. You gotta actually have the person there. Yep. It says, uh, the writing is on the wall. <laughs> I like that. The writing is on the wall. Right. They took Just like in Daniel. Yep. Everything comes from the Bible. With technology moving so fast, it's so in our freedoms, privacy, and otherwise occurring with increasing frequency, there is little hope of turning back this technological, corporate, and governmental juggernaut. Even trying to avoid inclusion in the government's massive identification database will be difficult. Difficult is going to be impossible. Even trying to avoid inclusion in the government's massive identification database will be difficult. And uh, that's about it. That's about the end of the article. But I have one more thing to show you about the uh, the retail, about how they're going to introduce this RFID chip and your fingerprint scan it into the retail world. Okay. This is from a this is from an article from realretailsystems.com, and again. You know, the same company that's going to show up here is the B12 Technologies, which is a subsidiary of Positive ID. It says, Biometric Fingerprint ID, the future of retail point of sale tech security. Right, that's for all you people who got jobs. You're all going to be a part of this too. All you good Samaritans. It says, Nearly every available retail point of sale system allows retailers to assign a unique password to each cashier. But if even one password is stolen or misused, your retail point of sale system is vulnerable to attack. So you know, like 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 the other said, for all you people that have jobs, whether you have to punch have to punch in a time number to clock in and out of work, clock in and out for your time periods. This with this, you're gonna have to scan your fingerprints. It says once inside your retail software, the intruder could change prices, lower the quantity of hand, delete items, steal your customer list, or take any number of other damaging actions. So all these so-called companies, these corporations, are gonna is gonna take this retail point of sale system because it makes their their inventory and their system safer. It's more convenient and it's more and it has more security. Right, and they always tell y'all them stupid ass stories. And if the retail point of sale system was accessed with stolen or hacked password, finding the responsible party can be almost impossible. These concerns for business safety are spurring POS companies to incorporate biometrics into their retail software and point of sale hardware. Right. Problem. Right. Reaction. Now solution. they got the solution. You put your damn hand on that. And then, you know, they have, I'm not even going to read this, but uh, they have. Right. They give you all these facts to yeah. back up what they saying. That's the devil. All five billion dollars. We want to lose that. Okay. But they own all the fucking corporations. So what the fuck is y'all talking about? And the shareholders are part of the elite, so don't give me that shit. And I'm going to jump down to this paragraph. How do biometric fingerprint readers work? When an employee logs into the retail point of sale system, he must enter his user ID. But instead of typing his password, or instead of punching in with, you know, with right, the Right, but sometimes y'all forget. He simply scans his thumb on, on, on or finger on the biometric fingerprint reader. Like in this picture right here. It says any time the employee attempts to access a password protected area or retail point of sale software, he is required to scan his finger and the this increased employee accountability can
can help protect you from costly damage, whether international or accidental to your data. My problem, we have a solution. Because next you're going to be waving your goddamn hand with that chip over it for that same job. That's your next move to keep that job. Take this chip, now you got to have access. So if you're a manager mm -hmm. or if you're in any of the manager position, you're going to have to be able to swipe your hand or you got to lose your job. Installing and implementing way of life. Right. Installing and inter implementing biometrics in your retail businesses can give you added peace of mind. Yeah. You'll rest easier knowing that the data you de you depend on is safe and secure. Yeah. As biometric technology has improved and more point of sale products have become available, biometrics have become affordable to re to retailers of all sizes. So whether you're already running a retail point of sale system or you're shopping around, you may want to consider the added security of biometrics. Right, so I mean it's coming in the theater near y'all. <laughs> but um, that's a, uh, this has been a, yeah, this is the last of, a, of the, all the articles that I have on this so-called system that Esau is going to integrate into the Mark of the Beast. So um, the Elder has a, has a uh, movie clip for you, for you guys. Uh, uh, G.I. Joe Retaliation, the new G.I. Joe that just came out, and it has uh, the fake of facial recognition software in the movie, and it actually shows you play by play how the software actually works. And meanwhile, while he using that on her, her team is using the DEA match system mm -hmm. that you spoke about. Uh -huh. And the handwriting is on the wall. That's right. why I made sure I got the scripture. Oh, you got it? Yes, five and two. This is uh, Daniel chapter five, verse two. It says, King Belshazzar gave the great banquet for a thousand of his nobles and drank wine with them. And that's what y'all doing now, having fun and rejoicing while y'all partying and kicking it. What's going really going on? While Belshazzar was drinking his wine, he gave orders to bring in the gold. Oh, and Belshazzar is Nebuchadnezzar, by the way. Exactly. And we in Babylon and great again, and Obama is him. Or and King Ramsey. African. Or Nimrod, one of them. Right, he's African. While Belshazzar was drinking his wine, he gave orders to bring in the gold and silver goblets that Nebuchadnezzar, his father, had taken from the temple in Jerusalem. So, this, ne this Belshazzar is Nebuchadnezzar II, and he's just drinking out of the same cups that his brother took out of our holy temples in Jerusalem. Just like Bush, father, daddy Bush, mm -hmm. was at Yale University with his son on his lap and that... Um, Skull and Bones um, picture. Yeah, yeah, magazine. And they had Geronimo Skull at their temple. Same thing. Yeah. History repeats itself. It says, so that the king and his nobles, his wives and his concubines might drink from them. So they brought in the gold goblets that had been taken from the temple of the Most High in Jerusalem. And the king and his nobles, his wives and his concubines drank from them. And this time they took the Lord people and they using us and drinking from us and our uh, talents and gifts. In our blood. Yep. Literally. As they drank the wine, they praised the gods of gold and silver. Exactly. Like today, yep. uh, y'all praise the gods of money. Of bronze, iron, wood, and stone. Suddenly, the fingers of a human hand appeared and wrote on the plaster of the wall near the lampstand in the royal palace. The king watched the hand as it wrote. His face turned pale, and he was so frightened that his legs became weak and his knees were knocking. The king summoned the enchantress, en enchanters, astrologers, and diviners. Mm -hmm. Then he said of these wise men of Babylon, whoever reads this writing and tells me what it means will be clothed in purple and have a gold chain placed around his neck, and he will be made the third highest ruler in the kingdom. Then all the king's wise men came in, but they could not read the writing and tell the, ki tell the king what it meant. So King Belshazzar became even more terrified, and his face grew more pale. His nobles were baffled. Verse 10. The queen, hearing these words, these voices of the king and his nobles came into the banquet hall. May the king live forever, she said. Don't be alarmed. Don't look so pale. There is a man in your kingdom who has a spirit of the holy, holy, holy angels in him. Right, an Israelite. In the time of your father, he was found to have insight and intelligence and wisdom like that of the, of the gods. Right, because he broke down the whole nations and the, the man and the beast that his father gave him the vision of. I mean, told him the vision of. 
It says. And matter of fact, before he even told Daniel of one of the uh, dreams, Daniel came and broke it down to him. Yeah. Without him even telling him what it was. It says, uh, your father, King Nebuchadnezzar, appointed him.